I'm Matt Newton, WUVA News. At the Miller Center of Public Affairs, I spoke with Melody Barnes, the co-director for the Democracy Initiative, an effort launched in 2018 to engage with the many challenges facing democracy. And the Democracy Initiative is born out of the fact that the University of Virginia believes, because of our history, because of our founding, that we have an important role to play, we've had an important role to play in the shaping of the American society and an education of the American citizenry. We want to build on the assets of our university, the bright students that we have, the wonderful faculty we have to develop research that will help us consider those challenges. What are the opportunities that lay ahead, not only for the United States, but for countries around the world? And then to engage in the classroom to help students better understand the philosophy and principles of democracy and understand those challenges and think about how they will affect them no matter what discipline they are in, no matter what field or profession they go into, but just in being good, engaged citizens. And then finally, to translate all of that so that we're engaging publicly, that we're talking to policymakers, that we're talking to business leaders and philanthropists and heads of community-based organizations and grassroots activists. What are the planned concrete objectives for the initiative for the next six, month, six months to a year? Well, last year we started out the year with two democracy labs. Well, we have a research laboratory that focuses on the issue of corruption in democratic institutions. And we have a lab that's focusing on issues of religion and race in democracy. In the fall, we're going to launch two new democracy laboratories, uh, one of them that focuses on the media, another one of them that focuses on the issue of statecraft and authoritarianism around the world and how it impacts the United States and other democracies. Does the Democracy Initiative have plans to study how the Office of the President will use or has been using digital media to communicate directly with the public? It, that very well could come up as part of the research and the work that's being done by the Deliberative Media Initiative. That's the lab that I was referring to. Um, I think, broadly speaking, they're considering the ways that media helps to shape or undermine deliberation. Certainly the way that a president uses uh, digital media is a part of that larger conversation. Is this helping us to come together, to focus on issues, to debate them honestly, to share real differences, or is it being used to try and achieve other means? So continuing with digital media, we've seen problems with fringe groups using digital media to organize rallies. How do we address those problems under the United States Constitution? We believe in freedom of expression. Um, in the United States, and that is embedded in the First Amendment. But as we also know, there are parameters um, that circumscribe that. Um, that's been a part of our First Amendment jurisprudence for quite some time. I think part of what we're looking at right now are companies that are trying to determine and, and put out policies that will allow them to address issues of hate speech. So at the Presidential Ideas Festival in May, it was announced that there will be a new Institute of Democracy. What do you think will, the relationship will be between this new institute and the Democracy Initiative? The Institute, as Jim Ryan um, told the audience during the uh, Presidential Ideas Festival, is going to serve as a broader umbrella to bring together the various institutions across the University of Virginia that address issues of democracy. So that not only includes the Democracy Initiative, but also the Center for Politics, um, Weldon Cooper, the Sorensen Institute, schools like the Batten School. But we have found wonderful ways, the Presidential Ideas Festival being just one of them, to collaborate on those issues. And I think you know, there'll be some exciting announcements going forward in the fall and spring about other ways that we'll collaborate to do so. The Electoral College was originally implemented as a check against the potential negative outcomes that can come from the popular vote. Obviously, there's been a dramatic change in the past few years, especially with the presidential election in 2016. What do you think should happen to America's electoral system mm -hmm. in the near future, and what do you think will actually happen to it in the near future? It will require, I think, a serious debate and a an un better understanding across Americans as to why the Electoral College was put in place, um, what benefits it serves, even as people look at recent elections and 
pick your, you know, ma no matter whether you're a Democrat or Republican or an independent, you know, you've got an election to choose from that you, you know, probably gave you some pause um, at the very least. So even when you've got the immediate situation and a set of facts that may give you concern, looking forward and looking around corners, is that something that the United States wants to do away with? There's a famous quote from Benjamin Franklin. He was asked upon leaving the Constitutional Convention what kind of government he and the other delegates had created. And he responded, a republic if you can keep it. So over 250 years later, do you think that democracy is safe? I think that democracy has to be fought for every single day. That contrary to what many people believe, democracy is not inevitable. And in fact, in many ways, it is quite, quite fragile. Uh, it is, that's part of, in my opinion, the beauty of it. The fact that it requires individuals every day to be engaged, to be thoughtful, uh, to consent to be governed. and take very seriously the responsibilities that come with that. I don't think that democracy is safe. I think that we are able to make it safer when we realize that we have a direct responsibility for it that, that rests with no one except the citizens of the democracy. This interview was edited for length, but you can see my full uncut interview with Melody Barnes on wuvanews.com.